Hello, my name is Geoffrey and in this tutorial I will be showing you how to implement uh, RBAC in Laravel framework. RBAC is short form for Role Based Access Control. So we are going to be building this application. Now this is how the application works. I can add new users here. For instance, I can add a user called uh, John Doe. Called John Doe. And the email is something like john at doe.com. And then I have the password and a password again. And then I can assign this user a permission or a role here. Let me see. This one is a storekeeper. And then I can submit. And you see the user has been added and there is a nice notification there. Now, if I want to add a, a role, I just come to roles. And then I can create new roles. For instance, here you see we have three roles that we have already created and we assigned John Doe a role of a storekeeper. Now when you come to roles, you realize that a storekeeper has what permissions. So you can just click on show and you'll be able to see that a storekeeper can only be able to see a product, the product list. So if we go back and we need to add edit this list from this application, we can just assign new roles uh, or new permissions to uh, this role. So a storekeeper, for instance, we can edit. You see right now on this uh, list is stored, product list. If I want them to be able to create new products, they just click on this list, this, this uh, checkbox, and then this one if I want them to be able to edit and to delete. But for now, because I want to show you a some kind of a demo here, let me leave it as a uh, product list only. And then the, here we have products. I am able to see all these buttons, show, edit, and delete. And I can also create new products here because I am logged in as the admin. Let me log out and let me log in as John Doe, who he created and gave the role of a, um, of a storekeeper. So I can show you some difference. So login and John Doe is selected there. Login and he is logged in. And you see immediately that up here we don't have roles. And here we have products, but John Doe is not able to create products and he doesn't have the rights to edit or delete products. So let us dive in and let me show you how to do this application. So I have not written a blog post on this because I have found one beautiful blog post on IT solution stuff. And I will also leave the link to this blog post on the description below. So I will be following this blog post step by step in the implementation of this uh, this RBAC uh, application here. So let's get started and build this application. The first step is you run this command to install a new Laravel uh, uh, application. I have already done that and I am going to be changing directories here to my Laravel application. Let me pull this screen over. And I want to make this one uh, slightly bigger so that you are able to see. Let me go to edit and preferences. And then I will need to change this to around 18. Yeah. And so I'll do a uh, uh, CD2 Laravel and permission. So if I if I do PHP at this and serve to start my server. You realize that when I come here and I refresh this application, I will see a completely new Laravel installation. So let us go ahead and start building this app. So let us go to our tutorial here. The first thing we are supposed to do is to run this command so that we can install the, um, the, the package in our application. So I copy this command. And then I stop the server and I run it. So this has been installed successfully. And the second step is we add this to our providers array. Where you find this file is shown here. So let us head to that directory. We need to go to config and then we open app.php file. And you scroll down and anywhere in this list you can add this. I like to add it at the, at the, the bottom here. And then we follow to the tutorial. We have done that. The next thing is to publish these uh, config files here. Let us go ahead and publish the config files. 
and they, they have been pub published successfully. Continuing the tutorial, here we need to do PHP artisan migrate. And of course, you know, before we can do this, we need to have a database. So we can head over to our PHP my admin localhost. Here we are going to create a new database. And then we are going to call this Laravel permission. Let me use an underscore here instead. And then I'm going to copy this and create the table. And I have my Laravel permission created here. Then I will go to my, uh, my, my directory, my files here, and then I'll go to .env, and here I'm going to use this as the database, and then I'm going to use my uh, username and my password. Make sure you use the correct uh, details for your environment settings. If you use mine, most likely they are not going to work. So when we have done that, we are now ready to run this command php artisan migrate so that we can install our uh, we can migrate our tables and here my tables are migrating and they have successfully migrated if now i come to my uh, php my admin here i will find these three tables migrations password resets and users let us continue with our tutorial so here we see that we are supposed to create migration tables these are very important so i would recommend that you pay close attention the first thing we are going to do here is to publish this uh, spati permissions provider so let us go ahead and publish it paste it here and that one has been published and then we create a migration for our product table let's go ahead and again paste this one here you raise that there's a problem the reason is because here they have used migrate make migrate it's not make migrate it's make migration so when you'll be following this tutorial make sure that you have changed this from migrate to migration and then when i run this now i'm supposed to be able to create my migration successfully and this one when this one has been done when you come to uh, databases migrations you will find a new migration here this is product migration let us continue the tutorial here we have users table now this one has already been created by default by laravel so we may not need to do this so i will skip the users table and then i'll come to products table this one we don't have this one is the migration we just finished running so i will copy everything in this like so and i'll come here and i'll highlight everything and delete and paste whatever i have copied from the blog post here and then i'll continue after adding the products table the next step is to add our spati tables now if you published the uh, provider app here with the tag migrations then this one the the spati tables will already be added to you the application so to confirm that if you come here you will notice that we have a new migration here called migration tables if i open it i see that i have all those tables in here so we can go ahead and skip this step and then we are in now creating models here we have a user model and as you can see in our application we already have a user model in the app directory down here however there are a few things we need to do to this uh, uh, user model so that uh, it can work. We need to add two things. The first one is this statement. So we use it there. And then we also need to add has a use API tokens. Uh, sorry, use has roles. We need to use has use has roles. So let us add it there. And we are done with that. The next thing we need to do is we scroll down here we have product uh, model so we need to copy this code and we don't have the product model so what we need to do let me just clear this i can say php artisan make and then i do model and i call it product remember that we are supposed to name models with uh, as in singular and then now it, it has been created successfully and i have my model so if I come here, I'll find my model. Opening it, highlight everything and paste the code you copied from our blog post. 
So let us continue. So the next step is to add the roles and the permissions middleware which are going to protect our routes. So I will copy these two uh, lines of code and I'll, I'll head over to app http and kernel.php. So I'll go to app http and kernel and I scroll down to route middleware and then I'll paste this anywhere here. So that is done. And the next step is to create CDA for our permissions. Now, we don't need to do this, but I will do it because I want us to follow this tutorial. So, let me create the CDA. So, copy that line of code, paste it here, and our CDA has been created. When that is done, this is where you find your CDA. You go to databases, and then you go to seeds, and you have your permission CDA here. And then, here we are given the code that should be in that CDA. Now, what that this CDA does is that it populates our database with some of these uh, permissions. So, let me head over here. And then, I'll highlight everything and delete and I'll paste this new piece of code. After you have created the CDA, the next step is to run the CDA. Now, when you do this, this is not going to work because we don't have the, these tables, this permissions table set up in our application. So, let us go ahead and first of all, migrate our tables. So here we do php artisan migrate and our permissions uh, tables are being created and when you come to your application localhost we had only three tables initially and when this is done you will notice that we will have more tables here you can see we all these tables have been created by our migration and when you come to the permissions tables here we don't have any permission and now we can go ahead and run our seeda so let me copy this line of code and then i'll paste it here and run it and when that is done this gives a success message and then you come to your database uh, here you notice that we have all these permissions added for us by from the seeda the next step here is to make an auth command this is going to do the uh, uh, scaffolding for the login into the application so let's go ahead and do that run it there's a success message and now when you come to the application this has to be running so that you can see them here otherwise if i refresh this is going to uh, it will not load because the server is not running so let us move on the next step here is we create our routes and here we are using the resource routes so these are enough copy and then we take them to our application we go down to routes and web and then we can paste them here now, in your real application, this is not going to look like this. You are going to need to enclose this, including this one, in a, a middleware that will protect these routes from users that are not logged in. But for the purpose of this tutorial, uh, this is enough. If you want to see how to do that, you can check it in my other uh, tutorial for the Laravel complete course. So, let's go ahead and see our next step. The next thing is to add our controllers and we have the first controller we need to add is the user controller. So let me copy this piece of code for the user controller. So copy that and then come over to your application and you need to add that controller. So let me close some of these files. And then controllers are in your app directory and then HTTP and controllers and here. And as you can see we don't have the user controller here so we need to create that one so php artisan and then make and controller and then we have user controller that one has been created so we can come here and we find our user controller we highlight everything paste whatever we have all right so let's move on and see our next step is to create a products controller so product controller we are going to copy this piece of code and we're copying the right piece of code copy this one then head over here and create a product controller so product then we come to our application product controller delete this paste and then we move on the next thing we need to add is our role controller so we are going to copy this copy that copy and we head over here create another controller this one is the role controller so role 
created so we come here we have our roll controller paste and then we head over here now here we have a number of blade files we have app blade php this one is going to be found in views and layouts and because i have done this before i am going to copy all these from the other application they are exactly like this nothing is going to change i just want to save some time so in your case you can just copy them from here or you can clone my github repository you get all these uh, files there so i will head over to my other application here um i have permissions open it and then i'm going to go to resources and views and there is going to be products roles and users so i'll copy these three uh, folders and then i'll head over to laravel permission um laravel permissions and then i'll go to resources and views and then i'll paste them here when that is done i can come back to my control uh, to the blog post and continue so all this we have pasted so we can just go ahead and skip them and the next thing that we need to do here is to add this <coughs> exception handler so i can copy this piece of code <coughs> and then i'll head over to uh, exceptions and handler now exceptions are found in your app directory exceptions and then we have a handler here scroll down to where we have the exception handler and then paste that piece of code this one will give us this message when a user tries to access a route where they don't have access to and like that we are done and this application tells us to do php artisan serve okay so there are a number of things that i want you to note that are not in this blog post number one if we go ahead and do php artisan serve this server is going to run and our application here is going to wake up hopefully yes and we have login and sure of course we cannot log in because we don't have any user if you come to our database here you see that um let me refresh this so that they can access the tables users we don't have users here so let me go ahead and create a user i'll create myself and the password again password and then i'll register i have been registered and i want you to take note of this part because there are some links that are going to come here now there are some things that i've not done here that is why you don't see any links here they are supposed to be links here so if you go to my application we have pasted uh, resources here and we have pasted uh, in views we have pasted users and roles and products in layouts we needed to change this app layout so let's go back to the, our blog post and copy the app layout so i'll go up up to where app layout is you can see these are so many files so this is the app layout so i will copy this one this piece of code for the app copy and then i will replace everything in my app layout when that is done now come back to your application and refresh and you notice that i have all these roles these uh, links here i have ma manage users i have manage roles i have manage product now if i click on manage users there is going to be a problem it says class form not found this one is not included in this blog post so here you are going to need to uh, let me close that i think we are done with it here we we need to you need to pay attention to what i am doing here I will also put a cheat sheet of this one in the description below. So the first step is you go to your terminal and add this piece of code. Composer require and this. And then this one is installing those dependencies. So this has completed successfully. The next step is to add the aliases and the providers. So i also leave this code in the description section below so i'll go to my uh, aliases array remember this one is in config app and i'll paste this line of code and then i will also need to paste i also need to paste the aliases so i will copy them and paste them here and when that is done 
we are supposed to be able to run this program again so let me just make sure that my server is running so if i refresh this now i can be able to manage users i can go to roles but this one throws an exception remember we added this line of code in the exceptions array and then i can manage products this one again has an exception now when you encounter this it means that this user yet has not been given any roles now this is how i give them roles head over to your database here i have a user and this user has an id of one and then i have role has permissions here this table is empty it's not supposed to be empty now when i go to users i have used a one user here if i go to roles i don't have even one role but i have some permissions so how do we create roles and we don't even have access to we don't even have access to the roles uh, uh url here so this is how i do it go to head over to your terminal and stop the server and then type this php artisan make again these commands i'm going to add them in the description section below not make but this one is permission because this is coming from the permissions uh, package and then i'm going to say create create and then a role note that this has to be as it is here this one has to be this way and then the role i want to add here is super admin all right this one has been created now when i have this role i can add all the other roles from my dashboard so i don't need to add the rest here the next thing i need to do here is to make sure that i have reset my cache but i will show you that when we come to that part so let me first of all run the server and now when i come here i need to see that role and yes i have a super admin role here so when i come to role has permissions i need to map all the, the permissions to this role because basically super admin has all the permission the the, the 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 permissions to access anything within the application so let me go to insert and i have one one and then i have two one and i can just make this one ten. so i have three so i basically map all the permissions in this one row and then that was four this is five and then i have six one and then i have seven and i'm almost done and then eight and yes and then i click on go now this table has all these uh, values now after that the next thing we need to do is to make sure that our user has this role so that is supposed to happen in the model has roles table right now we don't have any value here so i can go to insert then i select this one and then my model is model one id is one and then here i need to add app and then user is the model type and then i click on go and i have him and that's all i need to do now if i come to this table and refresh sorry my server has to be running so let me go ahead run the server and here i have my user management and i have my role management so here now we can manage our users we can manage our roles we can manage our products so let us add one more role here because we only have super admin so create a new role and you notice that here immediately we have permissions so we can be able to add permissions here we have a role uh, store something like store manager and a store manager can cannot do roles roles that we only leave, leave them to super admins this one can list products create products edit products and delete products add and then we create one more role for a store keeper so store keeper and then this one can only list products and save now we can go ahead and add our users we only have one user now which is a super user so create a user here so uh, store manager can be the name and then this one is uh, manager at uh, email maybe dot com and then we have the password and the password again and this one is the store manager and we save and then we have a 
another user this one is the store keeper and then we have the email keeper at email.com and then we have the password and the password again and then this one is the storekeeper save so we have uh we have all three users set up now i would like us to log in so that i can show you a few things here the first thing we need to do before we log in let us check the permissions that each each user has here to do that you can go to uh, uh, manage roles and then if you want to see who what super admin can do click on show and here is a list of all the permissions of course you can format this to look better if you want to see the other maybe store manager you can click on show and here you notice they have these permissions and then you can click on storekeeper and they have these permissions now you, you can have as many people as you want with different uh, roles here so let us log out and log in as store manager login we have all these so if i go to manage roles there is an exception of course you can again customize this to look better this one does not have access to our roles uh, route but if i go to products here the, the the store manager can create products i can create a new product here called bananas and this is a banana and i save and there is the product and now this guy can show can edit and can delete this product now let me log in as a storekeeper so log out log in as a keeper i think it was keeper and i can log in here and yes that was this password so here again look we have all these uh, 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 links here if i click here again this guy does not have that uh, access if I click on products, you realize that this guy cannot post products and they can actually not uh, edit or delete products. All right. But why do we have this uh, URL here, which we don't need to have because these guys don't have this uh, URL. So we can hide this. We can just go ahead and go to our uh, uh, permission table and maybe take a permission like raw list. And now we go to and hide this so that if you don't have that permission, you are not going to see this. So head over to your uh, app. Uh, this is supposed to be in views and layouts and app. And here we have our links. So roles here, you can just say add can and then you paste that. If a user can do that, then you don't forget to end can. If a user can raw list then show this otherwise it's not going to be shown if i save that and i just refresh this you notice that that one disappeared it's not there because the storekeeper cannot be able to manage roles now if i log out and i log in again as joffrey who is the super admin you notice that i will have all the links up here so this can be done in uh views and if you want to do it in controllers, you can just come to your controllers. Like for instance, let me go to this one and maybe products controller. And if you want to ask, uh, to, to apply roles, you can do something like uh, user. Of course, you will have an instance of a user like user variable user equals auth and then user. And then you can say something like if and variable user and then can and then you give your you are all here like if user can roll list then do something here so show some routes do this go to this route if user can this do go to this route if or else if the user can this go to this route and you can be able to do anything with this so thank you so much guys for watching and i will see you in my next tutorial